Mauritania, where do I even begin? A country on the west coast of Africa, just across the Atlantic in deep sub-Saharan desert, is a raw, strange, magnificent and one of the least visited countries in the world. Three times the size of France, but only 4 million people to fill the giant expanse. Its sand seas, canyons and mountains are still vastly unexplored. About 90% of this country lies in the Sahara Desert, which is rapidly expanding and taking over the establishment. It is a no man's land where you can still find communities that live today as much as they did a thousand years ago. It is the last country to officially abolish slavery in mid-1980s and is an epicenter of culture, tradition and values. Mauritania, a land of blue men proudly sprawling their cloaks. Gigantic palm trees peeking through prehistoric ruins. A land of 40 saints. Miraculous oases in an empty, vast and dry desert. A land of 4,000-year-old original handwritten manuscripts preserved in sandy bookshelves. A land of unforgiving, inhospitable and seemingly endless desert intrigued me in more ways than one. However, of all the things I saw and experienced, what I will truly remember Mauritania the most is for its people. It's warm, kind and hospitable people who were so giving and proud to share their piece of life and culture. <laughs> Especially Hala. Hala, our host, was God sent. She is one of the most generous, giving, and humble person I have ever met. By profession, Hala is a pediatric neurologist who graduated from Cornell Medical College in Qatar and moved to the US later for further studies and practice. She did her fellowship here in the United States, after which she returned back to Mauritania to serve and make a difference in her own community. She has big hopes and dreams to advance medical care in her home country of Mauritania. It was not only the adventures of the trip, but also Hala's company, her dedication to her profession and her intellectual conversations that kept us engaged. Hala and her friend Otuma were the prime reason why this trip exceeded all our expectations. She was the kind of host that gave us every bit of her precious time and went out of our comfort zone to make this trip happen. People like Hala, their kindness and their hospitality are the reason why I say that traveling changes your life and revive your faith in strangers from places you have never even heard of. Although now, she is no more a stranger, but a dear, lovely friend from a beautiful country. Our adventures with Hala began right away with first stop to the ancient caves followed by Eye of Sahara. Due to security reasons, the identity of each foreigner must be declared at every checkpoint that you pass through. In our case, our host had printed several copies of our passport which were presented to the rangers of all the checkpoints that we passed, 
which by the way were too many to count. This is one way how Mauritania is taking steps forward towards travel security. Every ranger greeted us and welcomed us with a warm smile. Our first stop while driving to the ancient city of Wadan was at Amogjer in the Adra region to see the Neolithic rock paintings. Our driver, Abdullahi, was a person I will never forget. Badass, caring, and so warm. He was just the person you wanted to rely on while driving in the difficult dunes, trust me. Upon reaching the caves, we met our cave guide, who was a true nomad and lived under these ancient rocks for six months in a year in hopes of showing his hometown heritage to travelers like us. And it was evident that he loved it and was so passionate about what he was doing. The walk to the caves was beautiful. We ran through red sand, ledges, cliffs, and rock-fronted shelters to reach the rock art that dated back to 3rd century. The illustrations were mainly of animals such as antelope, giraffe, and cattle. As a history fanatic, this blew my mind like it always does. There is something deep about preservation of human expression and connection. Rock art has been produced in many contexts throughout human history and is something that has always fascinated me. After reaching the top and soaking in the beautiful views, we departed from the prehistoric site. Little did I know that my first night in Mauritania will take me by a huge surprise and let me tell you why. Now, in the middle of nowhere, in the small town of Atar, when we were just expecting to spend a night in a humble nomadic setup, we found ourselves at Auberge de Caravan, a beautiful guest house run by this French lady, Cathy, and her cutest little pup. Like, why? How? Why is she here? I mean, I don't know. I was intrigued and I wanted to learn more. In between conversations, midnight, desert breeze, Arabic dialogues, and French music in the background, it finally stuck to me that I was in Africa. Our first real home-cooked meal of the day was tonight's dinner prepared by Kathy and her staff. The dinner was absolutely delicious and nothing like I've had before. It was also my first time eating camel meat. One thing that I simply couldn't have enough of was this fresh hibiscus juice that actually became my obsession for the rest of the trip. But there was one thing I wanted to do before I leave this guest house in Atar. I wanted to sit with Kathy and ask her what inspired this French lady to establish her home in Mauritania. So I have Kathy right here in Nouakchott and I am so fascinated and interested to know that of all the places in the world, why are you in the middle of nowhere in the desert? <laughs> it's a um, strange country Yeah. where there are many um, uh, how do you say uh, contrast um, differences? Yes. One one day it's uh, the weather is perfect, blue sky and uh, and the temperature and all very good. And uh, tomorrow uh, um, wind with sound and uh, horrible and uh, very hot and uh, and people and uh, many things like that. But it's a very um, a country that. Uh, Either you love 
Yeah. Or, or you, you, you okay. Or two extremes. Two I extremes. Think, no I middle so. point. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and I love uh, because it, there are many big spaces and um, I, um, I feel good here. Wow. I feel good. Do you think people around the world have started getting to know about Mauritania? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I think, um, uh, for example, in France, um, many years ago, nobody knew Mauritania. And with, with the TV and many things on the TV, and people uh, start to. And people who love desserts mm -hmm. uh, know Mauritania and love Mauritania because yeah. it's, a, it's a very, very nice place. Well, Kathy, I love your place, and if I were to come back to Mauritania, I know I will come here. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, and I hope you you can. I I love this um, when we meet people like you because uh, I know that after they talk with people and they say you have to go there and there and there and uh, it's like that. It's just the word of mouth. It's a wonderful know. place. Wonderful, awesome. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> After looking at the courtyard one last time, after a restful night's sleep, we said our goodbyes to Kathy. It's not very... No, it's just every moment I can get. <laughs> we were now headed to the most special place called the Eye of Sahara or the Richard Structure with our badass driver of the Lahi who flew the car through the desert like a pro. The mysterious Blue Eye of Sahara, also called the Richard Structure, is a unique geological wonder located in Western Sahara that is famous for being one of the very few geological structures that are visible from space. It has actually been used as a visual landmark by astronauts since long. The eye is circular and has symmetrical rings. Now, there are many theories. Geologists originally believed that it is a crater that was created when an object from space slammed into Earth. It is also notoriously famous in the community of dreamers who fantasized it as the lost city of Atlantis. Well, as of recent research, it is a reminiscent of supercontinent Pangaea that started to break apart some 200 million years ago during the Jurassic period, thus resulting in the formation of this eye. We walked through the desert and rocky patches to reach the eye. Unfortunately, due to an incident, we lost our drone before this entire trip even began, which basically meant that we could not see the eye because of its huge diameter as it's only visible from an aerial view. And the second unfortunate thing that happened to us was getting a little lost and sidetracked. We couldn't get to the center of the Richard structure. Now. Isn't this the point of traveling? To learn that you don't have control over these things and the only thing you can do is to make most of your time, no matter what. Anyhow, we still reached the site of the Richard structure and actually saw the rings of the eye. Do you see these gray rings just behind the hill? Wait for it. Right there, just behind the hill. You can easily turn around 360 degree and visualize the rings circulating around you. And what came next were Chinese tourists, <laughs> when all this time we thought that we are the only humans there. They demanded that we take pictures with them. As I looked around, I saw a camel with its baby roaming far away. I just couldn't take my eyes off it. It was a dreamy and raw desert sight. And that, my friends, was our little adventure. Hey, Hala. How's it going? Good. Is it your first time here? It is my first time. Really? Yeah, I've never been. Whoa. 